everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and um, today I thought that we'd finally get on and get Wilhelmina Mouse finished. Now Wilhelmina is in book two I believe which is Sewing Moon and Lapin and her friends and it's the little mouse which is here. She's a really cute little character and I've been wanting to make her for a while but I don't know why I've just procrastinated about her so apologies if you've been waiting to sew Wilhelmina's head because there is a video how to sew her ears um, however I'm going to be honest as well and I've now lost her ears. So I'm going to make some new ears for her in a moment, but I've got, I've got my dismembered Wilhelmina. She's kind of here and her arms are ready. It was just the head that I needed to do. Now, the other thing that I did do is I did a tail. Um, I didn't follow the same directions as they did on um, Inkle Crafting because mine's not made out of felt. So therefore I'd, I'd have had a raw red showing if I'd have um, done it that same way. So I've cut out another tail. So, so this video is gonna be how to do the tail. Now I know I've already done mine and attached it, but for those that want to make a, a tail out of fabric, you're gonna to need to know this section. I'm then gonna have a little break, make my ears, and then we're gonna then carry on and, and make our head, which I've got cut out ready. So um, apologies if you've been waiting. Thank you for bearing with me. I am I have got some more clothes as well traced out that I want to get done as well. So, But I'm, I'm gonna kill my procrastination by actually finishing Wilhelmina first. So, um, let me just show you as well, she's made out of faux suede, I don't know if you can see that as well. So she's quite a nice little character, her legs are twisted for some reason, I think that's just probably the way I've just um, um, stuffed up, so I'll get her straightened up at some stage, but yeah. Let's get Wilhelmina's tail made, shall we? So in book two, if you find the page that Wilhelmina is on and her tail, and it is actually in my book, page 111, and it's just a long triangular piece like this. Um, so I've cut that out of my fabric. Now, if we were doing this out of felt, I believe that what Sarah wants you to do is to roll it and keep rolling it on itself and then sew it down and that it will create a, a tail. But because we've got fabric that's got a raw edge, then if we do that, we're gonna have a raw edge shown because there's no way to tuck it under. So the way that I did this tail, um, is that I actually sewed it part the way down by machine and then spun it the other way round and then hand stitched the end of the tail and just put a little bit of fray check on the end just to stop that from, from fraying. Um, and then I stuffed it a little bit with some um, of the fibre fill stuffing that we use for the, for the main bodies. And that kind of was worked for me. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with it. Obviously, only you can know whether this is going to be good enough for you or not. Um, and if not, you can choose your own way of, of, of doing your tail. But I'll show you my way and then you can you can choose how, how you proceed. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold the tail in half. So we've got the right sides together. And then we're just going to put a couple of pins in just to hold it still for me. Now, I'm not going to sew all of the way down. So we're going to sew probably 95% of the way down, but I just want to leave that little bit at the end because I've got one of those little hook turning tools um, and then I can just hook it through. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna just finish it off by hand. So let me turn the camera angle around so you can see better and then we'll, we'll get on with a bit more. Okay, so I'm just doing my, my tail here and just folding it in half. And I'm just putting some pins in part of the way down, oh, one pin at a time. This fabric doesn't take pins very well. This is the mock suede that I'm making um, this tail in. Well, I made the whole of the lunar in, um, not lunar, well, the lunar in actually. I'm gonna leave that bit open because I'm gonna get so far down and then I'll just stop with the machine. So that's what I've got at the moment. So it's just literally just raw edges together. And then I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna back tack here and then I'm gonna sew down here but I want to go so far and then I'm going to stop because I'm going to hook something through and then pull it the right way. If you haven't got that, what you could do is put a couple of stitches in your tail and then um, have long ends on them and lay it down the centre of your tail so that you've got like a, a bit of a turning thread to pull on to turn it. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, but all, all we're trying to do is get this narrow little bit at the end here turned. We're going to finish this little bit off by hand when, when, we've, when we've turned it and I'll use some fray check on that just to stop it from fraying. Um, so let's put this under the machine and, and get stitching. Okay, so I've just got my ordinary needle, um, needle in there and my um, ordinary presser foot on. So I'm just going to put it down to this end. I think I'm going to follow this little plastic bit on, on the end of my presser foot here as my guide. Get my pedal. So a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back. 
and then we'll just start sewing down this edge. Needle in your work so that it anchors that um, needle for us and, and that fabric so it doesn't start to slip. The more fraying and loosely woven your fabric is, the greater the seam allowance you'll need so that it doesn't fray or pull, the stitches don't pull. Um, but this one's quite closely knit, so I can go quite close to the edge on this one. And again, now that we've gone past where the pins were, I'm just gonna hold it by hand. So we get quite far down the end. I'll take my work out with the snips and take our threads off. Okay, so this is what it's look, looking like at the moment. So we've just got that sewn along there. So this little bit here is open and I'll show you what we're going to do with that next. So I know there's all kinds of um, turning tools you can get. Let me take this price off because that was from my supplier. A wholesaler. So the, I've got this one which is an essentials and it's a loop turner and what this is it's got a little um, loop on one end which is here this metal loop and then on the other end hopefully you can see it's got this little hook and then it's got a little latch hook that closes too so as you're pulling it through the latch hook closes and then smoothly comes out through your fabric so that's the theory. So well, hopefully I've left enough room here to get this to turn this. So we're going to pop this hook here into the end of our um, item. It works with rouleau straps and all kinds of things this does and um, all those kind of things. And then what the idea is, is that you just then hook, if you can, you get the hook to bite through the fabric. Not wanting to do that for me just at this moment in time because just as I say it's quite a densely woven fabric and so I've got it through at the end there and then now that little hook will close as I start to pull and hopefully if I hold on to this end quite nicely it should and it is starting to pull it through can you see it's just pulling it through so if I oh no <laughs> it was pulling it through and not through far enough for me to be able to capture it I don't think oh no oh dear we've got a video malfunction folks right hold on a second because that's wanting to pull through there okay it's quite a nice little gadget when it works well Just see if I can poke that through that way because it's not going to go through Hold on a second, let me get this right, folks. <laughs> Best laid plans. Okay, so I've just used a pin just to pinch that back out again. Let's try again. So, don't you just love it when things don't work on camera, hey? So, let's put this through and make sure it's got a nice big bite of this fabric. Again, I'm making things look much more complicated than they are. Okay, so that's got a nice bite. So then put, close the latch hook over it and then hopefully, second time lucky, if it will pull through. You might have a favourite turning method as well. I know there's all sorts of turning tools out there, isn't there? This has always been my favourite up until today. Okay, you can see I'm making a right mess of this. Just hold it further down. Wonder if this video will ever see the light of day. <laughs> yeah. Right, there's the hook, the latch is closed. Yes, it's going there. Right, so the, the idea is that you can just pull this through at the top. Might be because my hands are hot. I keep bunching it down. Once I've got hold of it with my fingers, maybe I can pull it through. Pull it through a bit better. But no, it's let go again. 
Okay, this is this is going to go into one of the how not to do a YouTube video. But oh, I hope you're giggling with me because it's just, it's just not working. So find your own way for making um, Wilhelmina's tail because I'm sure it'll work a hell of a lot better than my suggestion is doing. So this is the this is going to the outtakes one. This is. Now, for all those people who said that I've got a lot of patience, we'll now see how much patience I have got. Right, okay. Not tons, because I'm going to snip off the end. Poor Wilhelmina's going to have a, a, a shorter tail. Let's see if I can push that back out again now. Nope, doesn't want to come. Brings me out this way. If at first you don't succeed, folks, you switch off the camera, you keep trying, and then you pretend that you did it all the first time round. Right, that's got the mangled bit out. Let's take the rest of that off. Okay, I'll probably put some Benny Hill music on this one or something and just try and see if we can, for those who remember who Benny Hill was. Not very politically correct, but... Okay, I'm going to start again, folks. This isn't working. Okay, so I've just cut myself a new tail. <laughs> I'm going to start again. <laughs> I'm folding the two ends together and we're just going to sew down this side as, we ha as I did originally. To my threads. Those. Right, I'm not going to go down quite so far this time and leave myself a little bit more room for turning. So I've gone down to about that far this time. Okay. I'm now going to pull this in. I am going to go to the end of the tail and again get the hook into the very end. Come on. Anybody else talk to their sewing while they're doing it? Or is it just me? Okay, so that's gone through there, I think. Nope. Yes, it has. Close the latch hook. Now I'm going to hold on to this so it just feeds through that little bit first. Okay, folks, hopefully we're doing this now. So we've got it turned through a little bit at the top and I'm holding on to the very top so as it comes through, and I'm not holding it tightly, we want to get that long bit through first before it folds on itself. Gently, gently, gently. Oh, we're nearly out. There we go, we're out at the bottom. So I'll unhook the hook. And now... Hopefully, with a little bit of gentle persuasion, that should all feed through. You just gotta make sure your fabric's quite robust, I think, in order to be able to feed it through this way. If it was a if it was something that's going to stretch badly or it's a fabric that's going to um just just really shred, then you know you're gonna have one or two problems, aren't you? Again, you can use a knitting needle to, close, to turn this round if you wanted to. I was just being clever by trying to use my gadget. Okay, here we go. Yay! We've got our tail. Okay. So there we've got our tail, and yes, it is open down here. But what I'm going to do now is I am going to hand sew this shut by putting the edges in to the middle and then sewing like a ladder stitch going down there as far as I can. When I get as far as I can, I'm then going to just tuck in the end and then I'm going to hand sew it again. So let me get my needle um, threaded up with some um, thread and um, I'll come back to you and we'll see how we do this. Let's do a knot. 
I can do a knot. Okay, that's the first success. Let's go back to what we can do. Thread the needle in to the tail. We're not quite such a long thread this time. And now we're going to take a stitch out or a bite out of the tail one side and then out of the tail the other side. of the, So either side of that sewn seam that we've already done without tangling your thread up. Then what I'm going to do is a bit like bias binding really, is you're going to tuck the two sides in together like that and hold it with your thumb and then kind of bend it in the middle so that it then hides those edges. And then we're going to take a bite out of one side of the tail and then a bite out of the other side. And as we go down, that's going to just hold those two sides together because there's no going to be no stress on this tail in terms of it breaking open. So I've only got a single thread. You just keep tucking those edges in and folding them together. You've just got to kind of hold it with your fingers. And just take a bite out one side. And a bite out of the other. And this is what I did all the way down as far as I felt I could get. And keep going a little bit further yet. So if you've already made Wilhelmina's tail and you've made it easier or you found a different video that shows you how to make a tail for Wilhelmina and they did a better job of it than I'm doing for this one, although the first one worked first worked straight off, so it's a bit of a mystery as to why this one isn't today. So it gave me the confidence to say, oh I know, I'll share this with my YouTube viewers, they'll want to see how I made her tail. Well done to anybody who's sticking with me so far. And if this is your first video watching me, please believe me, this isn't my normal standard. Oh, I don't like to think so anyway. So, okay, another stitch there. So I'm kind of wrapping it around my finger to hold it. I think we've probably got down that far off where as far as we can go. So I'm going to take off that end bit there. I'm going to fold in that little bit just there on the end to make a neat edge. Fold in the edge bits and then do what we can to get down toward that towards a bit of a point. So we're not far off anyway. Just use your needle just to fold in any edges and threads that or fibres that are loose. Take your stitch maybe you've just found some right colored um, felt and you've made your tail out of felt that might have been a good idea too mightn't it I know I haven't got any of the right color though they don't do a lot of sp uh, felt in Spain either you know they just don't seem to have a lot of it and certainly not high quality wool felt like you'd get from cool crafting or oh, I've just not found where they are if you live in Spain and you found somewhere please do let me know because I would love to know okay we're getting down towards the end Just using my needle just to fold that edge in and then once I've got the stitch on the edge we'll be able to pull it tight and that'll cinch it in tighter. Careful not to stab your fingers at the end. And then I'm now just going to do a few stitches over at the end 
I'll just kind of pull all that in together. And I will trim off any little threads that we've got that I've managed to escape with my snips. And then the last thing that I know that I did last time was I put a bit of fray check on the end. If you're not familiar with fray check, it's um, a liquid that you can put onto things like buttonholes um, and things like that that will just help hold things together and stop threads from fraying. It's, it, it dries clear, so you don't have to worry about it spoiling. The only trouble is, do be careful with it because I have once spilt it on... Um, spilt too much of it onto a I don't know if it was a garment I was making or a bag I was making or something and it, and it did stain it and it didn't come out it doesn't just wash out with water so just be aware of that okay so I'm just going back along the tail a little bit just to make sure that those stitches are oh gone and stabbed myself finger out of the way for a bit till it stopped. Now I know that this um, mock suede has been a bit of a nuisance to work with so it could very well be that my fabric isn't assisting me in what we're doing today. But as long as Wilhelmina ends up with an acceptable tail then I think she'll be quite happy. And hopefully you all think that at the end of this, we'll have an acceptable tale for Wilhelmina. Okay. Well, we have a point. We have the rough shape. So we're going to just go with that. So let's just put a couple of stitches in place just to hold our threads. And actually, if you bunch up your, your stitches a little bit, you're going to give her a little bit of a curve on the end of her tail too, aren't you? I've heard of people putting pipe cleaners down the tails as well in order to be, make them poseable. So that's an option you could do as well at this stage. You could just tuck a pipe cleaner if you've got one down the, you know, the fluffy things down the end. So there's, there's our tail for now. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is get a little bit of stuffing and I'm just going to stuff the end of this bit here just so that it stays um, rigid. So bear with me one second. So I've got a trusty um, knitting needle, not with a with a bluntish point so we don't poke through any of our um, stitches. I've got the opening to Wilhelmina's tail just on the end there. You, you're familiar with stuffing Wilhelmina with them. Um, the characters I'm sure they can be a little bit fiddly to try and get it started but if you get one bit going then the oops, sorry and the fibers do start to hold on to each other and they will start to to go in you don't want a lot of stuff in it's just to give it some shape really they say that these characters always take more stuff in than you realize don't they I think that's very true I'm just poking that down as far as I can get it so that it's not empty. But it's not like the limbs, I'm not going to stuff it so that it's um, as rigid as the limbs have been. Okay. A little bit more. Push it down a little bit. So that it's even all the way down. Don't want a bumpy tail. Just make sure you're ready just roll it between your fingers just to get that stuff in equally distributed i say this one isn't isn't very um tight but that the, the tightness isn't the aim of the exercise it's just giving it a bit of shape really and just we just thread our needle up again and i just tucked the end in with my needle like this just put a couple of stitches through if you like just to just to hold that in place just on the edge. 
so it's kind of folded it over all nice and straight. So just really just trying to give it a bit of a an edge really because then what we're going to do then is now of course mine's already attached my my foot attempt number one of my tail is already attached to my Wilhelmina just trying to make sure that's nice and round and even just use your needle just to get that but if we just pretend we were attaching another one for her I matched it on the back of my um, on the back of the body here look I've got the seam down the centre there's the tummy and then all I did was offer this up I put the seam down at the bottom so let's pretend we're potentially having another tail just here so I put, matched the two seams up at the bottom and then I just took a pin and just attached that in just to hold it for me in place for where I wanted it to be just a couple of pins just to hold it that's it and then if you just use your needle and thread you can just work your way around taking a bite out of the body and about a bite out of the tail and just work your way around and just tucking any little bits or bumps in to make sure that it's nice and smooth and then if you look at this one down here I'll take this one off for now so it doesn't get confusing so as you can see that's what I've done with this one here just sewn it all the way around so that's the tail So I have no idea why that was so difficult because actually it's a simple process of making making the tail. I think I just made it look way harder than it was. I do like the effect that I've got with it though in terms of the little bit of stuffing in the end um, and the way that we get it to a point at the end without being able to machine sew all the way down there. Um, hats off to anybody who can turn that round when it when it's done because it's just so, so tight. I don't know how you've managed to do that. Um, I hope I've given you a laugh with, with this video. I'm not going to edit out all of all of the um, wrongdoing and all of my struggles because sometimes it's just nice to know that it's not just us, isn't it? And that, that everybody has a day like that sometimes. Um, I'm just going to disappear off now and do the ears and then I'll come back and we'll look at doing the head. And hopefully that's going to go a little bit smoother than the tail did. <laughs> so I hope you're having a good day, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my videos i know this one hopefully you will agree with me isn't up to the normal standard um but i don't want to redo it because life is real and that's that's what we, that's how things are sometimes but if you do want to have a look at more videos then please consider subscribing because i'd love to have you along and share the journey and as you know all of the skills that you learn with making the characters and their clothes are directly transferable to making adults and children's clothes as well and, and we will get on to doing that as we progress with our with our sewing skills so have a great day everybody thank you so much for watching and if you've got to the end i really appreciate you take care everybody bye